Pow! This is our interior of our flare. It's stained, it's painted, it's all wood. And that's because we did it ourselves. And if you're curious on how this was made, we're gonna talk about it in this episode. Keep in mind, we're not professionals and this was our first try. So take what you like from this video and do what you want with it. All right guys, I'll see, I'll see you later. Sorry, 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 oh, sorry, okay. Shh, whoops. <laughs> Okay, how do you like our backdrop and seating area? Whoa! It's gonna you tip gotta over. It's a little Tyke's picnic table. So here's what we wrote as an intro. <laughs> so you bought yourself a sprinter. And you need to put a flare on it. Cause you can't fit. <laughs> so you quickly cut some holes, put your flares in, and they look great from the exterior, but when you go on the inside, they look like a bunch of fiberglass. So you can go ahead and purchase one of Flare Space's interior finishing kits, which will save you a lot on time and it looks pretty clean. Or you could save yourself a buck or two, give up your time and your soul and finish them on your own, just like we did. All right, let's get started. Now, in order to finish the interior of our flares, we needed three things. We were going to need a backer or a piece of wood that would cover up the back interior side of the flare. And then off of that would be a trim ring type of deal. And then connected to the very end of that would be another piece of trim. And they're all gonna be made out of wood because we wanted to keep in line with the aesthetic of the rest of the van. Yeah, now there are different types of flares you can purchase. And the one we have, I think it's the, the base one, yeah. the depth of it is, and they do make a deeper one and finishing that might be different than the finishing of this. So we're gonna show you how it worked out for us. And keep in mind, this is a sprinter. It's a 170 wheelbase sprinter, not a 144. Those flares might be a little different too because the sliding door opens over the uh, passenger side flare and that might have a different shape. I'm not exactly sure. So keep that in mind. As a quick disclaimer, we did finish the interior of our walls prior to finishing the flare. And we did that because we weren't quite sure yet how we were gonna finish the inside of the flares at that point. I just made sure that we left enough excess material, like the stuff we use for our walls, so it overhung the flares. That way, if we wanted to either like box it out or make a strange shape around it, I'd have enough material to do it with. So we're in the process of framing out the interior of our flare. And we've kind of been pushing it off because we knew it was gonna be a pain in the butt. The flare depth is different all over the place, but also, the shape of the flare is weird. It's like this, it's not square. And if you wanna utilize the most space or get the most space out of your flare, you kinda of have to work with that odd shape. So what we've done is we created this very flimsy test frame. We thought initially we were gonna build this as a square, uh, but then when we came in here, Julie was like, what's the point of having this flare if we're gonna lose six inches from it? Without Ooh. adding these pieces, you know, we'd lose probably four to five inches right there. Pew, pew. And same thing here. We lose these portions. These two down here are both five inches and they're cut at a 45. This is probably the most rounded corner up on the back. Yes, right up there. So this guy is eight inches and then this guy is only four inches because it's like the sharpest curve we have in the corner right up here. The total width, we're looking at 38 and a half, I believe. And then the total height, we're looking at 23 and a half. We are going to make this thicker. We're gonna start at five and a half inches thick and then we're gonna scribe it down because when we took a measurement, all of these spots reaching up to the wall are about five inches. Hopefully when we make one, we could just take it and replicate it and throw it on this side. So the initial frame was made out of scrap, which was half inch. Then once we were happy with the shape we had made, we went back and grabbed our three quarter inch birch plywood and made it into a more like solid, substantial frame. Uh. 
we basically cut a huge sheet of three quarter inch plywood down to five and a half inch strips. And then we cut those strips down at a 45 degree miter at the lengths that we had decided on. And we wrote all that down on a piece of scrap paper. And then once we, they were cut, we just adhered them all together with some glue and some pin nails. In order to make sure it was square on the sides, like top and bottom, left and right, we used a speed square and just brought it to each corner and made sure everything was nice and flush. It was like a two person job. I don't think we did a great job filming it because either one of us was holding and other was pinning or vice versa. That was that. Okay, so here's our second finished flare trim ring. <laughs> One, now it's drying. We just finished gluing and pinning it all together. We got the corners pretty straight, pretty square. So we feel relatively good about that. They have to dry this one and that one. And now we're gonna move on to the backers. Yeah. Backers of the flares. Now you can start with your backer, which was what we did second. And I think we did that because we wanted to be able to let the um, frame dry while we worked on the backer. So we knew we wanted it to be a thin piece of wood, right? So that it could bend to the curvature of the flare itself. And we had some quarter inch birch and decided to give that a go. We also knew that we would need to provide some sort of insulation or barrier between the fiberglass of the flare and our wood backer itself. And from our floor, we had some fan fold, like quarter inch pink insulation. And we thought, okay, that's probably our best bet because it's so thin and lightweight and easy to use. And because of that, it was also a great material to uh, make our template since we had to conform to all the curvatures and the cutout of the window. So. We grabbed some insulation, put it in there, and then spent probably a half hour just pushing it in, cut, pulling it out, cutting it, marking, pushing, cutting, marking, until we got something that fit pretty tight along our window and along the sides of the flare. So we transferred the template we made with the insulation to a piece of sandy plywood, brought it in, and we did have to make some corrections. Uh, but eventually we got to fit nicely around the window, like a really tight seal. Then it was time to do the real thing. Rocky's stressing out because there's some storms of brewing. Okay, so we are getting ready to cut the backers for our flares and we made a template right over here out of just like sandy plywood and our finished product is gonna be out of birch. And we just wanna point out that we oriented, uh, the, that we oriented the backer this direction because of the direction of the- Grain. Grain. So if you look at this plywood, you can see that the grain runs this way. So if we were to bend it parallel to go. the grain, it's actually pretty flexible and it moves pretty easily. If we were to try and fight the grain and create a perpendicular bend, it's actually quite difficult because it's pretty strong. Curvature of the van goes top to bottom like this, which means we want it to be able to bend and flex in this direction yeah. like this. So we chose to do our flare this way instead of going opposite the grain that way. And that's it. All right, we're gonna cut it now. Now I did the best I could with the jigsaw since we don't have any like fancy computerized routing machines or anything like that. And it's not perfect, but I think it came out looking pretty good and everything fit nice and snug where it needed to. And we only made one template of that foam uh, with the, I think it was the driver's side we did it on. And then we just took it, flipped it over and used it for the passenger side because they're identical. And we didn't want to waste a bunch of time making two when we didn't need to. And once we had both of those cut out, we went ahead and stained it using uh, a stain called Ipswich Pine, which is what we've used for the entirety of the van. There is a cut and stained flare back. back. <laughs> we're gonna poly it, right? Yeah, we're gonna poly it. Yeah, we'll poly it. Polying's for tomorrow. And then hopefully we can glue it in at the end of the day. She fell. No one saw. I was recording. What? You were? Yeah. I wasn't wearing my helmet. Yeah, she needs a helmet at all times. 
remember when I said that we installed our walls before we decided to finish the interior of our uh, flares? Well, now it was time for me to go back in there and trim off all the excess that I had left behind. Come to find out I didn't leave enough of a wall in like two of the corners. If I knew we were gonna do it this way, I would have built this to go a little further because now we either need to make a square piece of trim yeah. or I fill that, you know, that little spot. I just put a little piece there and try to hide that crack. So once we knew everything was fitting properly, it was time to glue those backers into place. Okay, so I'm filming this on the GoPro because this is gonna take two of us to do. We're finally gonna put our backer in and the first step is to put the insulation in and we popped a bunch of holes and I probably eliminated any source of R value to come from it. But my fear is if we glue this to the flare and then glue our wood backer to this, what's to stop the wood when it has pressure, we hit a bump to then just rip this foam out. Instead, I put holes to put glue into. The wood and the flare would be like a sandwich to the meat of our insulation here. And we're using marine grade adhesive. And that way we could glue the backer not only to the insulation but also directly to the flare itself so it would be like Swiss cheese in a sandwich and it, like you put ketchup on the bun and then when you push the bun the ketchup is also going to get down to whatever's below the Swiss cheese because the Swiss cheese has holes in it. Does that wow. make sense? Wow, nice. Okay, we have a little bit of wax paper and insulation. As a buffer. So, in order to sandwich everything though, we knew we couldn't do like any clamps or nails or anything like that. We had to use some shims and some scrap two by twos. We were gonna brace the two by twos against the outside, because there is still exposed exterior Metal. of the van. Yeah, yeah there's the like lip. a lip. And then have the shims press against the flare itself. And that took forever. All right. You've got your top lip that's very thin, so it's kind of hard to get stuff in there. And then and you- Down here, it's much deeper, so we have like almost right. a full inch of shims stuffed in there. Yeah, it looks like a crap show. <laughs> but it's really solid though. And that was that. We had our backers in. We let them sit for, I think, 48 hours because it says 24 hours to cure, but we really didn't want to fuss didn't with it. We didn't want to test it. Yeah. yeah. We gave it like two solid days. So with our backers installed, it was time for us to grab our trim ring and start scribing. So today we're scribing our trim ring so that it fits inside our flares. And we have the back of the flares already adhered. We used that marine grade adhesive, glued them in and they are set. Yeah. And we did that first because we wanted to know what the depth at each point in our flare because it's so inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And so what we're gonna do now is scribe around. Yeah, we have a couple tight quarters here like on the corners um, where we wouldn't be able to fit like a full pencil in in order to scribe we need to make little wedges. So what I did was I cut a piece to three quarter and I've got a little wedge of a pencil Hello. and the lead is about an eighth in. So when I set this here, I've got about seven eighths that I'm gonna subtract. I'm just gonna run it like this. And so you'll see here, I'm gonna lead off of it. So now I'm no longer touching, right? And I won't touch. Ooh, I do touch down here. <laughs> but it knows we're even. Look at that. I'm not touching, I'm not touching. I start to touch again here. It follows up and tapers. And it should meet up with my original line. There, see how it hit that original line? So now what we're gonna do, pull this off, take the jigsaw, and I'm going to cut it. I've been cutting it like a 45 degree angle because these walls are kind of bent like this. And so if I just left it as a straight cut, it won't sit flush to the wall. So once we had all of our lines scribed, I made all my cuts using my jigsaw again. So we cut our trim ring here. So let's see how it fits. Every side seems to be touching pretty well. You know, like we're gonna caulk these little gaps here. This, that's a small, minor, pretty flush, pretty flush, pretty flush. Horrendous. There's an eighth inch gap here. 
Now I don't have any more to take off the top. We're there. But if I take a little off from the corner here, I might be able to get it. Anyway, we spent a bunch of time doing that and cutting it until eventually we had a nice tight flush, fit. Nice tight flush, flush fit. We did have some minor gaps, but we weren't too worried about it. We were gonna fill it in with caulk later. If you can avoid that though, uh, do it because it's a pain in the butt. It's an extra step. Yeah. But once we had a nice tight fit to the back, we were able to then cut off whatever excess we had in the front. And like I said, we didn't have any at the top, but we did have a little at the bottom. So we trimmed that off and then it was flat to our wall. Flush all the way around. this project we actually tried a new uh, wood filler and it's actually a lot smoother than the one we're used to so we filled each of our joints with it and now we're gonna go ahead and sand it down as well as all of our edges this is the color we went with we were debating on some various okay. colors that's our kitchenette but we're applying it with a stick and a roller watch this all right, you get the idea. So we let that dry. And then we did our outer trim. All right, so today we're doing our trim, our outer trim. On our trim ring. On our trim ring for our flares. Right. And we picked up some little quarter inch pine, one and three quarters thick <laughs> from the hardware store. And so we figured out all of our angles using a nifty little angle tool. And then it was just a bunch of marking, cutting, pinning, and gluing. Actually, it was a little bit more than that since uh, our corners weren't all perfect 45s. Uh, so we did do, have to do a little trimming here and there to fill the gaps, uh, but it wasn't too bad. And then we came back and we filled everything in with some wood filler again and then sanded it down. Then we stained it and polyed it to match the backer, right? So we'd have like a stained piece of wood for the back of our flare, a pop of color for the wall, like the interior walls, and then another stained piece of trim. trim. What are you covered in? <laughs> you look like a monster. You look like a monster. <laughs> look at that. We're all stained. We'll just give in, we're just giving the paint a wipe down. Make sure we didn't get any leakage. That's looking pretty good. So we're gonna let this sit overnight. Uh, and then we're gonna come in and poly it. And then maybe by tomorrow evening, we're gonna glue it in. So installing our interior trim, basically went the same way as installing our backer. We applied a bunch of glue and then forced it with a bunch of pressure. Right, and but this time, because it was such a large, like we didn't have anything to push against other than the other wall, you know? We used giant ceiling jacks. Ceiling jacks. I don't even know what they're considered. They're yeah. used to like hold large pieces of uh, drywall up. But they were big enough to push from one side of the van to the other. So we were Which basically- meant we needed to do both at the same time. Right. And then stick the jack in between so they were pushing against each other. Yeah, which was a process. Farts. All right, so we installed our trim ring. Now, well, as we're sweating to death. But these are our trim rings. So we went ahead and we goosed up with marine adhesive, the backside of all of these trim pieces, as well as back side of this guy. The edges, you can see it kind of coming out on the sides there. It appears to be easier to clean when dry. We'll probably. When wet, so we'll come back and yeah, we'll kind of straight blade, blade to it, cut, cut it out. out. These are just light stands. light stands. We ran out. This is a C stand, but it's in. It's in. For now, we'll see if it holds. We let that sit and for another like 24, 48 hours before we pulled them off. And then we drove around with the van to make sure it all stayed in place. Uh, and luckily, kind of to our surprise, it did. So once that was in and it was good, we were pretty much done, but 
we had some small gaps on the edges that we wanted to fill in. We just went ahead and used some paintable caulk and applied a small bead all the way around our trim ring. And then we, I went ahead and, and painted it and touch it up. Uh, Very good. <laughs> well guys, here we are with finished flares. But you could see like it tied in pretty well to our wall. Our cuts weren't perfect, but it looks pretty good, you know? What do you guys think about it? Oh, all right. All right, so now I'm gonna lay in here. So Rocky <laughs> is about, I don't know, what do you think? How tall? He's like about three feet. Together? <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're one human. <laughs> He's getting pissed off. My head here, I probably have what? Five, five inches. And then, but my feet are touching the window. I like to lay on my stomach. So if you lay flat like this, now you can kind of see like my feet are almost touching and my head is probably a lot closer. And I. Am, How tall are you? I'm about Six, two? Five, nine, five, eight. Who are we kidding? <laughs> so I think. If you are any taller than like me and you like to lay on your stomach, you need to get the big ones. Whoa. One thing that I'm not too jazzed on is like if you want to sit up in bed, you're to read a you book. Have a hole. Well, you only have one pillow behind you. Add your second pillow back. <laughs> almost there. Got it. So you almost need three pillows. That's a hungry window. Yeah. So you'd have to be like this to fill that gap if you wanted to like sit up and read. Or we just stuff a dog back there. Sure. All right guys, uh, that's it. We appreciate you watching this video. We hope that it provides you with some information if you want to do this on your own or had thought about doing it, but there was no info out there previously. And we know we didn't do this perfectly uh, or probably the most efficient and best way to do it but it's- We figured it out. Yeah, we figured it out. It worked for us. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like something we did, you can always tailor it to fit your needs. You know, maybe this just gives you like a kickoff point. That's it. We did it. We did it. It's done. If you're new and you thought this helped, subscribe. Like, subscribe. Comment. Comment. All right. Toot. 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 <laughs> toot, toot. <laughs> he kept the mustache. Oh yeah, look, I it's still growing. have a mustache on. Does he look like a cowboy? Because that's what he was going for. Not yet. Hold on. I can curl it a little. And he becomes a hipster. I'm getting a zit zits like near my mustache now because I, I fiddle with it so much. You keep touching it. Yeah, which is why I don't grow facial hair usually. But look it. You see that? I can kind of curl it. Whoa.